All right, time for the really cool part, which is communicating with Firebase. Uh, it's actually, we're almost there. The first thing is, is that you do need, uh, since we're gonna be sending stuff over the wire, uh, we need to give internet permissions to our app, right? And I could have done that by default, but I figure um, us doing it together sort of will, will help us remember to do it in the future on our own apps, okay? All right, so the way that we're gonna do that, we're gonna hit uses permission here, and then name, and sometimes it's smart enough to actually go to the internet one. Um, if not, you just type in a couple characters and you'll get it. All right, so we're, we, we've added our permissions there. Super, super easy, okay? Uh, to use Firebase, you're gonna do this from your code. So the first thing you need to do is create a Firebase reference. I can put this wherever you like, but I'm gonna do this in, in main activity up near the top here. So I'm making a database reference and I get this using a, a stack method here, get instance, uh, get reference, right? So back in here in main activity, right? I'm going to go up here and um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and make a, a field for this uh, so I can access it wherever I like. So this is a database reference uh, if you're not getting this auto-completing here, go back and check your uh, your Gradle file, right? That's That should work. Um, and I can call this mref or my database or, or my faves reference or whatever. Um, all right, cool. And then I need to initialize this. So mref is equal to uh, Firebase database dot get. And if you type in get, you'll see get instance is one of the only things to do. And then we can do get reference, right. uh, like so, All right? And you're you're wondering, well, you know, what is what does this do here? So this is basically linking it together with that Google Services JSON file, um, so that it knows where to go in Firebase, uh, where where to go online to get it. All right. So that's a reference really to the root of our um, to the root of, of things here. So it's it's a reference to this um, to this sort of Bowtell favorite things. So I need to get within it into color um, and number. And the way that I'm gonna do that is by, um, by sort of descending down this tree um, into one of the children of the root, uh, which is color, All right? So let's, let's, um, let's go ahead and do this. All right, so um, I wanna set something over here really simple, which is just gonna to be to fix uh, the color of one of these guys. All right, so let's, let's, um, let's, uh, say that um, I just want to push the color, I don't know, um, aqua or something like that up to the up to the back end, right? Uh, so what I will do is I'm going to say mref dot child and that was the color node, right? As, as we saw it again, remember you, you, you saw it here, so it was it was color. Um, and let's see what I want to do. I'm going to show you the simplest thing to begin with and that's just to set a single value, right? So um, we just take the set value uh, method and we're gonna pass in uh, a string. All right, so set that to aqua. Now if I run my app now, um, all this should do is, is basically um, change that on the back end, right? So uh, go ahead and run it. All right, so mine's running here, so I'm gonna take a peek over in my back end and we see that it that it changed to aqua, right? So just when it started, uh, it changed it to aqua. Okay. Now that's okay and everything, but that's really not what I what I really care about. What I want to do is when they click the red, white, and blue buttons, right? I want to send it at that point. So I'm gonna get the get rid of this here, um, and I want to go into these cases, and what I want to do is just change them so that this guy goes to to red, right? And now before I was using a, a, a string for that, and if I want to be good about this, I can call get string and use that same uh, r dot string dot red that I was using before, or you can hard code it in. I'm not too worried about it, um, and I'm not going to bother setting the text right now. So I'm going to I'm basically changing it so that it's going to push to Firebase uh, rather than um, make the local changes. Okay and red and the white button uh, does white and the blue button does blue okay um, and you know you, you can you can run that and play around with it um, I guess it doesn't hurt right now um, to do this 
All right, and it looks like it hot swapped out some changes for me. So again, I'm gonna go back to my back end here, click red, and you'll see that it changes to red. Click white, and it goes to white. Click blue, and it goes to blue. And you can you can play around with those things, right? So it's very, very nice to use. We're just setting this value here um, of color. Right. Uh, of course, we wanna make something happen with here. This is a local change, but it's not changing these guys. So what I want you to do right now, uh, pause the video, and get it so that it changes this color here. So when you when you click with the up or down button, it's gonna push that new number up to Firebase. All right, so I assume that you did that. Um, let's see, if you didn't, you have to do something like this. So uh, um, set value to my number. Right. Uh, and really the same deal here. Number set value my number like that, and it, that that should work uh, just fine for you. Yeah. Um, good, and that's that's pushing right. It's it's really there's there's not that much to it. Um, I can I can show that 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 works right here. Um, oops, back here and then back to this guy, and I lost my mouse. Uh, here we go. Click up. And we can see it changing here on, on the back end, right? And that's really half of, of communication with Firebase, right? Is uh, pushing data up or making changes on the Firebase. Uh, the other half, of course, is, is getting stuff back, right? So let's talk a little bit about that. Um, so catching up, uh, to, to get stuff back, um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to that same reference, this, this, uh, this color node that's a child of the, the root. Uh, and we're going to add a listener there, right? Listen for Firebase, right? And what we care about is we're gonna set it up so that it only listens once, right? So that, um, so as soon as a change is, is made, um, it fires and, and that's it, right? Um, and that's okay. In, the, in, the, in this scenario, we're gonna have it so when we click the update color button, it's basically gonna, gonna ask Firebase, hey, Firebase, tell me about any, tell me what you have right now, um, and that's it, right? And we do that via a value event listener, okay? Um, this class, uh, we're going to be um, we're actually going to. This is an interface, I believe. So we're going to be overriding that, and um, we are going to uh, go ahead and implement on data change. That's the sort of the key one there. Uh, and we see that that in that point, we're going to update our UI uh, with any of the new data uh, that that came um, that came across the wire. Right. Uh, so let's let's go ahead and do this, and then we'll 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 talk some more about it in a minute. Uh, so this is the update color button. All right, so I have this, my reference here, and I'm going to add, and you see there's actually three of them. Uh, each one has a different purpose. We'll be playing around um, later in this unit with the, the child event listener. But right now we just want a listener for a single value event, okay? Uh, so let's do this. So it takes a value event listener. So let's make a new instance of the value event listener. All right, and you see it stubs these in for us. Uh, and what's gonna go in here is essentially, um, well, a couple things, right? So first of all, it passes us back a data snapshot. And that snapshot is uh, basically the value um, that, that we're gonna need. So if I do data snapshot.get, it has a key and database uh, and it has a value. Um, so we're gonna get the value and I wanna use this. So I wanna cast it to a string and I wanna use it um, within my, since it is a string, I want to use it within my set text, right? So I had my uh, my color text view, set text, and then let's see, get my parentheses matching up here, and it looks like, like so. And, you know, if, if it's if it's canceled, uh, um, you know, I might, I might want to log that it's canceled. So let's see, did I put a, Put a tag in here um, that says, you know, like like that there was some kind of error. Like so. Right. I don't think I've I've had an error that's been caught by this uh, yet. So I'm going back here and now what we want to do is when I click on this guy. So, you know, I'm changing them as before, so I changed it to white, and then I want to click update from Firebase. Um, it failed. All right, let's see what's going on here. All right, so I messed, messed something up, no doubt. Uh, 
that's not a problem. So let's see. So saying right here that, that I, I, I cast things um, incorrectly and that, that what I was getting back was a, um, uh, so let's see, so, so my, my get value. Yeah, I see what I did here. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, subtle, subtle issue. Um, my listener, so remember my, my reference was a root reference and I, I messed up here. I wanted to put the listener on the color child, right? Uh, what it was saying is is that um, it was giving me back a whole map, hash map rather than just a single um, a single value. Um, and again, if I had if I had done things at the root here, right, what I would get back for the data snapshot would be this whole thing, which is actually a, a, a map. Um, more about that in the next lesson. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and rerun this guy and see what we get. All right, so red, white. Blue, all right, update from Firebase, and we get blue here. All right, very good, that's what I was looking for. Red, update from Firebase, um, and I get red. Uh, super, okay, so, and um, that's exactly what I wanted. I can do the same thing uh, with uh, with my numbers. All right. So what I'm gonna do is, let's make sure we don't make this mistake again here. I want it to update the numbers too. Um, you could play around with it if you wanted it to update uh, immediately after you set it. Uh, you could put your listeners within here, um, or you could even. Uh, what I'm going to do is is when it when it does the um, when I click the update button, I, I want it to to update again. So I'll see. Let's not make that same mistake again. So so child number at listener for single value event new value event listener. And I'm sure you could be doing this, right? I mean, just you can kind of figure out what, what comes next here. Very similar. Uh, my number text view, uh, set, um, so set text. Um, and let's see, I wanna set it to my number. And what I really wanna do this time is I wanna take the snapshot uh, and use that to update the number here. So we'll say data snapshot dot get um, get value, and we will cast this guy to a long, all right, like so. I think we can actually, I think you can actually even pass in the, the class here and it will do the right thing. I know that's what we're gonna be doing with objects a little bit later on, um, but for primitives, it looks like we have, so we have some choices here. Uh, and set text, we want this to actually set to a string. So we'll just play a little game here, which is just to, to um, to concatenate an empty string along with it. It's not gonna love that, but I don't know of any other quick and dirty um, solutions. I could call long dot to string, but it doesn't like that either because it doesn't have a locale. So anyway, whatever. So let's go back here and now I click up and let's see. Um, let's see if I have done everything. So I'm gonna go back to my, my database here. I'm clicking up, yep, looks good. And click update from Firebase and we get that 20 back over here. All right, super. Um, so that's working just just dandy. Uh, so a little bit more about this. Um, so we, we did the add listener for single value event, um, which is really good if you just have something that's got up in once, right? We click the update but button and we wanna see what the current value is. Um, we often want it to be um, listening in the background without having to click a button to sync. Uh, and to do that, um, you can add value event listener. Right, and that will make a listener that just sort of continually listens. Uh, now the only disadvantage of that is that then you have to remove the listener. Um, so each one has its purpose, which is why they have each of them. Uh, we're also gonna um, use, like I said, the child event listener uh, for our movie quotes a little, little bit later on, because that has some other features, um, some other uh, nice methods for us to use. All right, okay, uh, works out really well. Um, we did the same thing for numbers. Um, and you can see here um, what I did, just cast it to along. So yeah, we've already done that. Uh, and we've, we've tested it. Uh, we've seen things going in both directions. Um, the neat thing is about this, you might wonder why did we even bother listening? We already knew if we clicked up that we could have immediately set it to some value. Um, but remember, the changes that we're getting are not just changes that are coming from, um, from our app but they could be changes that come from the, from the rest of the world, right? So what I'm gonna do here, for instance, if I go back, right, and I would have just changed the number. Um, let's see, uh, 
let's try to fix this here. Whoops. Uh, make it a little bit bigger. Um, and if I change this to 25, for example, and then I click update, um, we should get, oops, change this to 25, hit enter. Okay, it changes here. Then I click update here. Then I get the 25, right? Or if I change this red to be green uh, and hit enter, and then I click update from Firebase, I get green here, right? So changes that are coming from other places, including from other users or our app, right? So um, it's very, very neat stuff going on. Uh, so a uh, couple more things, um, just as, as we're wrapping up here. Um, I think you're ready, just that was a quick whirlwind introduction, but uh, to understand this stuff better, you need to understand a little bit more about how Firebase stores its data. It's in a JSON tree. Uh, and uh, my colleague Dave Fisher did a nice presentation on this uh, that he's using in, in his web and iOS classes as well. But it's you know it's, it's general enough that it's, it's not an Android or it's not app specific. Uh, so we get a link to his slides. And uh, if you're doing this on Rosebotics, you can see his video is next. Um, otherwise, if you want to find it, uh, a quick YouTube search will 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 give it to you. All right. So that's it. So go ahead and and watch uh, Dave Fisher's video, and we'll see you back when we come back. Then we're gonna kind of shift gears and uh, work on our movie quotes app, right? So more advanced stuff going on there, uh, should be fun. All right, see you later.